All right, so here we are. So our final speaker, have, have any of you ever been on a teleseminar? Raise your hand. Have any of you ever been on a teleseminar on a webcast where you got to click on the link and you could go and listen on the computer? Have you done that? You were probably using our next speaker's product, Instant Teleseminar. You familiar with Instant Teleseminar? He's the guy who developed and created Instant Teleseminar. He continues to innovate in our industry and come up with product after product that is better than the last. And he is going to be talking about another really cool opportunity for you to use the products that he has today. He's one of the most intelligent men in our industry. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of really smart guys, right? And so he's one of the most intelligent folks, and he's a lot of fun. I can't wait to see him on stage. Rick Raditz, come on up. Job frustration, inspiration, emancipation, perspiration, kitchen table, brainstorm, dream of income twice the norm, credit cards applied for, mortgage rates to die for, your spirit's entrepreneurial, but your home life's negatorial. Ignore advice you have in sight, drink the dew and work all night, procrastination rears its head, find some courage, get out of bed, time goes by, product's done, time to launch, battles won, open doors, not a ring, you forgot the marketing. Banner ads and blogging, billboards, broadcasting, and catalogs. AdWords, paper, click, free trials, RSS, ROI, Craigslist TV trade shows, branding, search, and webinars. eBay, e-zines, PR, podcasts, option forms, and seminars. Infomercials, evangelizing, jingles are quite tantalizing. Meta tags and merchandise, make sure your logo looks real nice. Private labeling, presentations, promoting product demonstrations, social networks, radio, newspaper ads. Here we go. Tele-seminars, conferences, venture capital, sponsorships, tracking trademarks, web design, franchising, you're doing fine. Link sharing, list building, form posting, it's never ending. B2B, B2C, and direct response TV. Audio and video and free samples, SEO, referral networks, FTP, copyright identity, publishing, presenting, promoting, and taxes, budgeting, forecasting, accounting, and taxes, and hiring, and firing, rehiring. Ah! So where could I get all that knowledge without going back to college? Comprehensive course selection is the way to go, I reckon. Tons of experts helping me with summaries to set me free. Add a dash of levity and you have a course named Brevity. Okay, uh, let's flip back to that, um, am I too loud? No. Nope. Oh, I'm perfect? Okay. Let's flip back to that other page there. How to destroy your business for maximum fun and profit <laughs> by Rick Raditz and other contrarian insights. Who knows already that I am a contrarian on most things? <laughs> yes, it's, it's worked out pretty well for me um, historically. Um, Dan Kennedy has a philosophy that the majority is always wrong. Okay, it doesn't speak much for the democracy, but, but he feels that, he explains, because most people aren't thinking. They, are, they haven't really considered what's really happening. They have an opinion, however they formed it, and that's their opinion. And so it's us in this room who have thought through things more, who have taken the next step, forming our business, whatever, um, so we have to trust that instinct. It doesn't matter who, what anyone else says. So that's why I'm a contrarian. Um, it just always seems to be right. It's, it's, it's the George Costanza principle. Who, who saw that famous episode of Seinfeld? Anyone? Okay, George Costanza, the big loser, yeah. losing again. Yeah. Jerry says, George, if everything you do is wrong, then the opposite must be right. And that's why I'm a contrarian. So I want to, I just have a list of ideas here, list of thoughts, okay? So there's no organization, there's no priority, there's no build to a close, okay? I don't have um, any rhyme or reason except that these are all good things that I think are important. So is it okay if I be a little bit random and just share things with you that I think are important? Okay, let's start off with this one. How to destroy your business for maximum fun and profit. Some of you, and I'm not going to name names, 
are in the wrong business. And I know this because you're struggling. I know it's because you're working hard. And you think you have to work harder to get to that next point where then you can work easier. Maybe, but you're not really sure because you haven't been to that level yet. And you notice that some of these people on stage, it's like, yeah, I was a painter and now I'm a millionaire or whatever, okay? You know, that can happen. And don't you feel sometimes like, well, why can't I do that? Or why isn't that me? One of the possible reasons why it's not you is because you've achieved a certain amount of success in your business and now it's become a trap, okay? And so if you're, I'm not saying all of you, most of you, the right thing to do is to grow your business, but some of you, the right thing to do is to let that business um, be by itself as you use its cash to create the next right thing. Who can do a second business better than their first business? Almost everybody, I think. Now, this is still luck and, and you know, experiments that can make it go wrong. But your first business, you got the wrong funding, the wrong idea, the wrong marketplace. You have the wrong product, you have the wrong pricing, the wrong partners. Everything you're doing is wrong to some degree. Your second business, you're doing some of those things better. That's all I'm saying. So how do you destroy your business for maximum fund and profit? Phase one is turn it into a cash cow as best you can. Not every business can, can do that, some can. Cut costs dramatically, really, really, really cut, okay? Then use that cash flow to um, give you time to invent the next better you, the next business, make sense? Okay, and again, I'm not saying this is right for everybody. I'm saying when you find yourself stuck, maybe it's time for a big change. And doesn't that free your mind? Okay, um, let's see. Declan Dunn mentioned that he likes to seek truth. Okay, I just want to say that to me is core to all of this because we all have opinions, we all have um, thoughts and emotions and so on, but there is a north. Now, who knows which way north is? Anyone want to point to north? <laughs> is it that way? I have no idea, okay. But um, let's all agree that there is a north and let's all agree that we, let's all agree that we could kind of point towards it but no one's going to be perfectly accurate, not even with the compass, because there's a little bit of variation in your pointing ability, right? Is it that way? Okay. I, who, who, in this case, it doesn't matter what the truth is. But there is a north. There is a north. There is a truth. One of my favorite people in the world is a guy you probably haven't even heard of called Eli Goldratt. Who's heard of Eli Goldratt? Oh, okay, great. That, is that guy just smart or what? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and he has this belief that there is no conflict in the world that, or, or, or contradiction in the world. There, there should be a way to solve these problems, okay? Um, we just have to keep on thinking. And, um, and the truth is our guide. So um, let's tackle the secret. Who, who's a, I, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands. You've all heard the secret or seen the secret. My favorite thing about the secret is that everyone saw it finally, so they stopped asking me if I saw it because they finally assumed that I did. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, here's what I feel about the secret. I think there is a mindset paradox, okay, a mindset paradox. I think it's clearly true that mindset is essential for all the things that they say is essential for. But then why does someone with that mindset start off you know, aggressively and it goes for it and then fails and fails and fails and fails. So there's it's a paradox here. And I think I have the reason. I think mindset is key at the beginning and at the end of our journeys to become masters of whatever we're doing. And so they keep using the examples from the masters, but we're all beginners. So if you're a pro tennis player and you're, trying to, you're number 20 in the world, you're trying to be number one in the world, do you think mindset is pretty much everything? I mean, you don't learn any more serves, <laughs> okay? It's mindset, it's routine, it, it's mastery. But in the beginning, you need mindset too. You need my, mindset even to have hope. So many people are locked into jobs and, or locked into the current businesses that they're in, and they don't have the mindset, the awareness that if they just step out of that, if they adopt this new mindset, everything changes for the better. Okay, and risk is reduced and rewards are, are, are heightened, okay? So um, mindset is essential for hope 
before you've done it, and essential for mastery, and then everything in between is not mindset. And so I made a list of what I think it is. So step one is the optimism that comes from hope, and you can get that irrationally, you can get that from religion, you can get that from the secret, you can get it from reason, or just, you can get it however you want. Step one is optimism, okay? Step two is the search for truth and your ability to discern truth. Okay, this is where you, once you've adopted the, the, the secret, now you start attacking the secret. Oh, it's wrong here, it's wrong here. Find what you think is right and wrong in everything you look at. So your ability to reason, okay, is the, is the second step. Third step is purpose, especially for us entrepreneurs, purpose. Why? Most of us entrepreneurs are idea people, and we will be t pulled in a thousand different directions if we let our mind pull us that direction, right? How, how many people here are, are idea people? Yeah, <laughs> almost everybody, okay? So if we have a, a purpose that we've adopted for our lives, or at least the next year, if not the next three years, if we have a clear purpose, here's what naturally happens. All of our ADD scatterbrain ideas that are all very cool, instead of distracting us towards random directions, they naturally happen within the context of our purpose. I'm getting a little philosophical here, but um, meaning if my purpose is to help entrepreneurs, then my brain's gonna naturally work behind the scenes on ways to help entrepreneurs. If I haven't adopted that as my purpose and written it down and told my, my spouse and told my friends and told my list that that is my purpose, if I haven't committed to that purpose, then I haven't committed to any purpose. I'm still open to being distracted. So I'll leave this for an exercise for you after our talk, because I got way too much stuff here. But darn it, figure out your purpose. If you have to go to a T. Harv Eker seminar to do that, then, then do that. <laughs> but um, find your purpose. Now, number four is personal development. Okay, once you know what your purpose is, you're going to know what skills, what training, what, what whatever, okay, you need to achieve your purpose. So personal development is the next thing. And here's the good news about personal development. You gain in personal development when your business goes south. When life is harder, you're gaining in personal development. If you think about life that way, as the sum of financial success plus personal development, you're always going up. That's my always going up philosophy, <laughs> okay? You're always going up. We're all always going up until you die, then, then you're down. But, um, uh, okay, so personal development. Number five, you can't develop yourself into everything, right? You're gonna develop your strengths more than your weaknesses. You're gonna develop your weaknesses to the degree that they're blocking your strengths. Okay, if, um, but you've got to go beyond yourself. You have to leverage your relationships, and that is masterminding, partnering. Like Dave, uh, uh, Dave over here, Dave, what's your last name, Strick? Steck, thank you. This is the guy about relationships and partnership. Talk to that guy. Okay, that's step number five, is, is you have to bring in people who have different strengths, different skills, to leverage your own and to, to propel you. Uh, number six is, uh, is to mechanize, mechanize, systemize, okay? Uh, this is where you, you're, you're ready now. I mean, most people never get past step one or two. <laughs> most, most people don't have the ability to reason, as I define it. So most people never get to step two. And so we aren't talking about systemizing anything until step six here. Step six is where you take your knowledge and, and your training and your skill and your experience, every, everything that is you, and you put it in, into some other system. It could be some humans, it could be the operations manual, it could be a computer program, it could be a website. That's where you have to build something apart from you so it can grow beyond you, okay? And then the, the final step is the mindset again. Because now that you're starting to systemize and so on, now you're ready for that, you know, $30,000 T. Harvecker seminar where it's all about mindset again, right? So don't be a beginner thinking mindset's so important and then jump to the $30,000 mindset seminar. You're not ready. Does that, does that help clarify everything that's going on in this industry? Help you know what to buy, what not to buy? You don't know where you are in the step. Okay, next random topic. Um, constraints. 
I have a, I have a uh, uh, Eli Goldratt has a theory of constraints. I have a different theory of constraints. My theory of constraints is if you take an idea person and you say, look, you have unlimited money, go off and design your dream house and come back when you have your design done. What's going to happen? You'll never see them again. <laughs> okay? If you take that same person, guy, guy or gal, doesn't matter, take that same idea person and you, um, uh, you tell them, I have a $100,000 budget. I have a basement, 2,900 square feet. The stairs are over here. The plumbing is over here. The heater and whatever is over there. Okay, design me the best basement you can for that budget. All of, what, what are you gonna, what's gonna happen? You're, in the next day, you'll have three different designs. Okay, the next day, and they're gonna be creative and good because they're an idea person. So, ironically, it's the constraints that allow us to get traction and proceed. Now, we as entrepreneurs, what's our goal often? No constraints. We're entrepreneurs because we hate those darn constraints. Okay, so we're actually putting ourselves into a position of no constraints. Um, well, wait, we do have constraints at first, right? We have financial constraints and time constraints. And so what happens with our first effort? We find a way to make money somehow. What happens after you actually achieve a moderate degree of, of um, uh, passive income? You relax. Ah, oh, finally, I've achieved my goal. And what happens to your business? Yeah, slowly, it slowly goes down. So it's the constraints that keep us focused, making good decisions, worrying about the nickels and dimes, all that kind of stuff. So I encourage you, the closer you are to success, the more you need to add unnatural constraints into your thinking. It's weird, but it's, it's absolutely true. Um, okay. Now, part of that can come from adopting a, a higher purpose, a bigger goal, okay? But it has to be natural. It can't be too artificial. It has to be, it might start off as artificial, but it has to be implemented in a way that truly is a constraint. You can't cheat. Telling other people what your constraints are um, is a good way of doing it, especially employees, because they'll, they'll let you know when you pass a constraint. Um, okay. My theory of up, I took over there. Okay, beyond green thinking for rich. Okay, Rick's product formula. Okay, here's my... Here's my product formula. I don't do marketing. A couple years ago, I thought I did marketing. And I realized that I hate marketing. I don't like marketing, because what is marketing? Marketing is not a sales pitch. This is not marketing. What is this? This is sales and teaching, OK? Um, uh, marketing is where you, uh, you reach out and tell more people about your thing. But that, that's a little bit of marketing. Really what marketing is, is the discipline of tracking every investment, every attempt in marketing, and, and cycling that back through. Marketing sucks, okay? Because we idea people, that is the opposite of what we wanna do. And so um, I've developed a formula to make tens of millions of dollars over my last five years here doing this stuff without any marketing really, okay? And, and here, here's my form, though. I create products that are inherently viral. I don't mean that they, they necessarily go to a million people, okay? But just the use of all of my products, if you think about it, somehow spreads the word. You put an audio up on your website, um, it might say poweredbyinstantaudio.com on there. You put an audio in an audio postcard, there's a link back to sign up. Um, same with the video. You do a teleseminar powered by, you know, uh, instant teleseminar. So just using my products spreads the word, and somehow I make more money slowly. All of my products have the same growth curve, slowly up. Okay? And um, uh, here's the cool part. Once you get your first hit, your first success, okay, then what you do is you start leveraging your success by partnerships. And you might even achieve your first success with partnerships too. But I think partnerships are especially cool once you achieve um, market penetration, okay? Once a marketplace knows that you exist and respects you, likes you, trusts you, is that really valuable? Yeah, okay. So what I like to do is partner then with other developers. My first partnership, I was the developer. 
Okay, that was my skill. Okay, uh, and I, I, I took my product and I gave it to Alex um, Mendozian and Armin Morin, two great guys. And they emailed their list a few times, called their friends, did a few teleseminars. My first teleseminar, I was so nervous, I told them, you guys talk, I'll just be here in case something comes up that you can't, you can't answer. <laughs> now you can't shut me up. Uh, <laughs> honestly. Uh, <laughs> and some of you have tried. Uh, so so the, the point is, um, uh, is a big milestone, is get access to a marketplace that knows, likes, and trusts you, so that then you can trade that relationship for a product development partnership where they're going to develop the product, they're going to service the product, they're going to do all the, the thinking. You might be involved in the design, but there's no cost to you. They're going to absorb the development cost, perhaps, and you're going to split the earnings. Okay? And so you're just leveraging your, your cash cow, your, your assets. Uh, let's talk about uh, brand then next, because that, that's actually related. Um, people get brand all wrong, and I'm, I'm not saying I get it quite right yet. I'm still learning about brand. But I think the best way to define an effective brand is where you pick a niche that you can dominate, and the name of your company or product is associated with a kind of an, an essentialness within that niche, okay? So for example, if you're doing teleseminars, okay, Instant Teleseminar has achieved kind of a dominance in that area. It's pretty much Instant Teleseminar or go to webinar, okay, depending on what you're doing, okay? And I'm just a little company doing whatever, but we keep on getting more customers, okay? So that, that's a brand where, uh, it, it, it means something to people. Um, let's see, uh, and also don't underestimate the power of a brand. For example, I, I was coaching a guy who was a, um, uh, uh, an, an outdoor exercise you know, leader, right? Have you, have you seen these things where you go to the park and it's like a boot camp kind of thing? So he called this thing like the, the Joe Schmo boot camp or whatever, whatever his name was, I forget his name. Um, we came up with a new name for him, Sunrise or Size, okay? because it's outdoor in, early in the morning, and, and that it, it kind of rhymes. And, and the goal was for him to um, uh, develop the, the, the business model and then sell it across the country and now have national awareness of the Sunriser size name and, and then sell that company once he, once he went national with that. So that is an example of the power of the brand. With the brand, you can achieve unlimited success because the more success you have, the more it is added into this brand. People, call it, people who know branding call it a brand bucket, okay? Here's, here's, here's a clue for getting the right brand. If you are being descriptive with your product names, there's an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is people who hear them um, in that moment will understand what the heck you're selling. And since most of us do such a piss poor job of selling, <laughs> okay, that may be a good thing. In fact, that's why people do it, because they, they can at least achieve some success with being descriptive. But, but think about it. Your brand is never shown in isolation, okay? Very important. Your brand is never shown in isolation. You have your brand, and right below it, what, what's, what, what's right, right below your, your brand, your logo? Tagline. The tagline solves everything, okay? Uh, you, you, you get to set the context for what, what you're doing. And then right below the tagline is what, typically, in a sales page? A headline or a video or something, okay? Now you're engaging people. The whole point of a brand is for people to remember it the next time they see it and say, oh yeah, that was a good thing. That's all, okay? But can you remember a name if it sounds like every other name in your, in your niche? No. So how do you be different without being goofy? That's the key. That's almost the key to life, really. Okay. <laughs> um, Harris is really good at this, or maybe not. <laughs> you and I are both clowns in a way. But uh, I think the key question in life is how can you be different without being goofy? Okay. That's the first part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry to pick on you, Harris. Um, I think the answer is to be evocative, okay? So if your name, a good example is Apple Computer, 
Okay, what, does, what do apples have to do with computers? But at the time when Apple was formed, it was IBM, NEC, DEC, you know, HP. It, it, was, it was all these initials, okay, very corporate sounding. So Apple came out with the word Apple. And it doesn't mean anything positive or negative. It might be a little bit soft for a computer name, but, but they were going after more of the consumer market. So it was perfect for them, right? And, and they've leveraged it well. Okay, so let's see. Irresistible offers. If you can nail this thing, irresistible offers, you make, make your life so much easier, okay? An irresistible offer is not about the bonus. It's about the core message. Domino's Pizza, 30 minutes or it's free, right? That's their irresistible offer. It was, that was the offer that made them get big, and then they had lawsuits because of you know, hit and runs. <laughs> and then that, that kind of ended that, that, that brand dominance. But um, OK, irresistible offer. The key is to understand your market's needs so well that how can you say no? Okay, it just it it meets my needs, all right. When you when you if you're in the if you're in the market for pizza, confidence in its delivery in 30 minutes or less, especially fast delivery, that's key to my needs as a as a customer. So their promise there it became irresistible. So remember we were just talking about brand and how brand has to be um, uh, you know you, you pick a, the, the, I don't know if I said this or not pick the sm pick the biggest niche that you can dominate, okay? That, that's the key phrase there in branding. Pick the biggest niche that you can dominate, and then don't mess with your brand. <laughs> don't become other things. Don't extend your brand. Pick the biggest niche you can, you can dominate, and then um, uh, give yourself a brand. And the irresistible offer is tied to that, because that's the offer to that one niche. And that way, the brand and the irresistible offer connect and accelerate everything for you. So I don't know what your marketplaces are. I don't know what your irresistible offer should be, but let me give you an example of an irresistible offer right now. Do we have the order pages? <laughs> okay. Pass out the order pages. Now, you, you, you figured out how this seminar thing goes, right? You guys have figured this out? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I come up on stage. I give you a lot of good information. I really bond with you and et cetera, right? And then I sell you like a $3,000 thing, right? Okay, so I'm the contrarian, right? So let, let's kind of shuffle things up a little bit. How about if I give you the offer early, and instead of $3,000, let's make it $1. Instead of telling you all the details, what it is, I'm not gonna tell you. And instead of a big refund, instead of double your money back, that's only a dollar anyway, no money back. You either buy right now for a dollar, or you don't, okay? Now, my belief is that you guys need this. You guys need, to, you have a need to buy something. You've been sitting here watching all these things, you wanna buy something, and you're waiting for the right thing. This is it. I want, my goal was to come up with an offer that every single person in this room would buy. Even the people who you know, are on stage. I want Harris Fellman to spend a buck. I want everyone to spend a dollar right now. So sometime, take, take out your credit cards, it's good practice for you. Take out your credit cards and fill out the form. I'm not gonna tell you when I'm gonna collect, collect them, but sometime during my speech, I will collect these forms and you either are gonna get what I'm gonna give you for a dollar or you're not. Now I did, I did this like two years ago. Was anybody here in the room two years ago when I did that? Did I, did I over deliver, Ken? I did, okay, over delivered. <laughs> okay, so fill out that form. One dollar. You gotta use a credit card. Okay, now wh wh why am I doing this, guys? It's not forced continuity, but there, but there is an, up, uh, an upsell. <laughs> okay, why, why are you guys here? You guys are here to learn techniques, right? Tactics, primarily, right? I mean, strategy, yeah, good, all, all this stuff is good. But really, you wanna learn how to hit the road and make more money, right? Right. This is it, you're experiencing it right now. Copy this, be a contrarian. Set yourself apart from all of your competitors with your name, with your commitment to service, with something. Be about something and be that something on purpose, not by accident. 
Okay, so I, I, on the bottom of the form is a little upgrade code, an upgrade price. So later on, I will be giving you another, off, another offer. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure you're not surprised. Okay, and, and I'll give you a little code word. If you want the offer, you fill in the code word. If you don't, you don't. Um, but then when I, when, I, when, I, when I ask for the order forms to come in, uh, you can decide at that time. Okay. Where are we? How to change the world. And no, I'm not going to go into my whole political speech. <laughs> How to change the world. We have Harris is on board. Mary is on board. Who else is on board? There we go. Okay, I love it. Again, I wanted to create an offer that everyone would take, and this is it. The $1 offer. If you can't spend a buck, I don't know why you're here. I honestly don't know why you're here. Maybe you don't either. Maybe you're at the other convention over here, the real estate thing. Okay. Um, how to change the world. You don't change the world by calling up the president and say, hey, let's do this different. You don't have access, and if you did, he wouldn't listen to you. Or as I've heard recently, he might say, yeah, that sounds really good. Talk to my chief of staff, and he'd just, he'd just laugh at you. Okay? So how do you change the world? Do you change the world by spending a billion dollars? George Soros has tried. Okay? Many people have tried. And you're going to create noise. <laughs> and then you're going to align the opposition against you. Okay? Okay? Republicans are marching in the streets. What's going on in this world? <laughs> I don't know. So that's not the way to change the world. How do you change the world? One person at a time, virally, okay? So let's talk about the right viral model for some product, or at least some possible viral models for products. What are the examples that have succeeded virally? Swine flu, Swine flu has succeeded virally. <laughs> Thank you, the guy in the hat. I appreciate that. What's that? Hot mail is a great example. Okay? So the use of the product spreads awareness of the product. Doesn't guarantee anything, but it helps. Okay. Now remember, we want profitable ones. You may have heard of like the, the, the talk to God guy. Okay, I don't know what ever happened to him. Maybe God called him back. But <laughs> there was a guy who had the conversations with God or some, something with God or whatever, right? What goes, what goes viral? What's his name? Okay, I, 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 I heard four different names there. I'm sorry. Um, okay, it, Morgan. Yeah, that's okay. okay. So what, what, what happened to him? I don't wanna, I, it was like, like, it was all bad, right? Okay, no, I'm not. I'm using him as a great example of how not to do it. How much money did he really make from that? How does his life change? What, what happened with him? Okay, so I think another foundation here is a foundation of core value. You have to be offering value. Now, I want to mix this with something called status. We are human beings. We buy from people. We, we, we socialize with people. We are people. We, we need people. People. Um, so you don't want to hear me sing. Um, to make something go viral, you have to consider the status of everyone involved. Meaning, people forward a joke. Why? But, but so what is funny? They're the one that has access to the funny stuff. They forward a joke because now they're the guy who found the funny stuff. Okay? You forward the political thing because you want to have status in the political community. You, you know, status. There was an acting coach, I forget where I got this from, um, some book or who knows what. But there was an acting coach who was trying to coach these darn actors who didn't have a clue how to sound real. Okay, in a conversation, a fake conversation, a, a scripted conversation. And he couldn't do it. You know how to do it. Some people were naturals at it. But how do you fake a conversation to make it sound real? What he stumbled into by accident was he told one person to pretend that they're delivering the lines and in a way that they are of higher status than the other person. They're in control. He told the other person to speak their lines as if they were lower status, trying to get the approval of the other person. Okay, or maybe even angry at the person in status, whatever. If you think of everything you do in your marketing and salesmanship in terms of how it will help the status of the person interacting with your sales letter, both by buying it. Look, when you take a long form sales letter, you know, with a 15,000 page sales letter, okay, 
and you read it, you might get excited. What happens if you take a printout of that and show it to your spouse or your coworker? We really need to get this, or your employees or your boss. Does your status go up or down? Down. I asked John Carlton's uh, guy, Stan, um, do, do long form sales letters work in business? What's the real answer? The answer is yes. If you get to the decision maker directly and they don't have to tell anybody else what made them buy. Only in that specific, and then he says they work as well as, as they do in, in, in general. But if they have to share it, they will get laughed out of the office, they, will, they, will, they, they can't do it. So status is key to viral success. Okay, remember that. I'm gonna give you an example of a viral campaign that worked. This is my, my most successful viral campaign. And it wasn't online. I was at the big seminar. Who was at the big seminar with all the ribbon fiasco? One, two, two people? Okay. I came up with this idea four days before I went there or so, and I, I rushed to get these little ribbons printed that go on the bottom of your badges. Okay? Have you seen those like big conference badges, right? And they get a, 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 like a little ribbon down there, down there that says VIP. Okay? Well, that's status, isn't it? That's an important piece of real estate. So I gave three people one ribbon each that said, ask me about VMG, viral marketing game. Okay, ask me about VMG. That was, the, that was the ribbon. So what's gonna happen the next day when the conference began? What, what, what has to happen? They're gonna meet somebody, they're gonna say, what is VMG? They have to, okay? That puts that guy in higher status, okay? That's kinda cool. Okay, and he says, well, VMG is the viral marketing game. And I'm, I'm, here's, what, here's, here's how it works. I give you this ribbon sticker to put on the bottom of your badge. It says, where is Rick Raditz? <laughs> okay. Okay. And when you find Rick Raditz, he is going to give you one of these. You know, what is VMG? So now they can achieve the same status that they just kind of, you know, bow down to. Okay. Uh, along with three other where is Rick Raditz stickers. Okay. And get this. More status. It's all about status. Okay, um, uh, when you get all three of your um, Where's Rick Raditz stickers turned in that you gave out, because they're all number encoded, okay, when all three of them get turned in, you get a VMG finalist <laughs> thing, okay? okay? VMG finalist. And they're all different colors, so you could tell instantly what the status of people were. Okay, I, so I, I gave it to three people I did not know, I believe, um, uh, the day before the seminar, the th three-day seminar. I thought, like, over the course of the seminar, I'd get a chance to kind of shake hands with everybody, right? And, and by the way, every ribbon that you got turned in, um, that you gave away, gave you an entry into a contest for a lifetime supply of all my services and products, okay? So it was, it was kind, of, kind of neat. So the next morning, someone gets me in front of the, you know, the doors to the thing before it opens up, and suddenly, kaboom, explosion. I had a line 30 people deep waiting to exchange the ribbon, and then they go off and they get back in line because they are ready for the next upgrade and so on. Okay, I took over that seminar that morning, <laughs> met everybody, and I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't have a way of tracking all these things coming in, so I grabbed a notepad and started writing down columns and numbers, and I was becoming an accountant for the next, I didn't really have time to meet anybody really, but I shook everyone's hand. So that's an example of a viral campaign that truly worked. Now, was it expensive? No, was it like, research and fund it, it was thought through, but my, my point is, you don't have to have a big budget to do a viral campaign on the web. You have to be um, smart, and, and you, have to, you have to think about things, and especially status. You gotta keep it simple. You gotta think about every actor in, in, this, in this little play, okay? Every role that gets played, and how is status involved. And, and you have to um, um, you know, you know, throw it out there and see what happens. Now, now here's the cool part. If it goes viral, it necessarily gets huge. It will fill up whatever space is appropriate to that particular campaign. You know, like for, instance, for example, MLMs are viral, right? And, and, they, and they work really well within the MLM community because they're all pro MLM. And the ones that have really good training will explode out into the general public who is not anti MLM, but not really for MLM either. They're just willing to make some more money. And, but n very few MLMs, I don't like any of them really, extend outward even further into the anti-MLM crowd. And as soon as they try, that's where the whole thing collapses, and then, the, oh, there was inventory problems, and then, then there's a new MLM company, right? 
Okay, so that's an MLM viral spread. So your viral campaign is going to spread within whatever community you've properly assessed the status you know, game uh, with all of the players involved, if that makes sense, right? And an example of this was we did a, a, an audio postcard for a singer named Carly Goodwin, who um, um, uh, just had this kind of, uh, you know, go troops, you know, support the troops kind of a song. And uh, she was trying to get us contact with Disney. And so we, we created a viral postcard. You could say if you like the song or, or not, you know, hot or not or whatever. And if you if said hot, it said, you know, could, could you, you know, I'm trying to get this contract with Disney. Right? I don't think it said that, but trying to get this special deal. So can you forward it on to three friends? If I get a million downloads, I get to sing to the troops and, and so-and-so. Um, and if they say not, she says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry you didn't like my song, but could you forward it to three friends who, who, who would like it so I can get my million downloads? So, so hot or not, we still ask for the three friends. And the thing did not go viral across the whole community, across the whole world but it did go viral within the military family community, okay? And so what happened was there was a big rush of people um, because, of, because of my list, and then, and then down, and then it just kind of stayed there. You know, 2,000 people a day were downloading the song for months, okay? Until she got some PR because of it, the right person saw it, because it had a life. The right person saw it, and she got the, the contract with Disney, okay? Um, so that's an example of viral success. Okay, uh, how much time do we have left? 45, 45 minutes, okay, so I'm halfway through. Um, I can go on for three days. Do you mind go on for three days? Or? Okay. Um, your bar for greatness, okay. We accept way more SHIT than we deserve. We accept it from our employees, from our marketplace, from our, from our bad customers, from uh, our vendors, from, uh, from uh, our spouses, from our kids, okay? All you have to do is raise the bar. Just ra raise your bar a little bit and watch your entire world change, okay? That's another way to change the world, is ra you raise your bar. It changes your world, <laughs> okay? Uh, as an, 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 I've got another concept in change the world here. It comes from a book called um, uh, Other People's Habits. You know, of all the habits that must be changed, other people's habits <laughs> um, must be, or something, I forget the quote. But um, if you change your attitude in life, that affects other people's reaction to you, right? Well, what is your life? Your life is a total sum of your relationships with other people. That's all that you really see in life. So. If you just change your attitude, you induce a change in everybody else towards you. The proof is when someone who's um, at dinner and they're all happy, okay, men and women are at dinner, they're all happy, and then, or two, two, two gals are at dinner and they're all happy, and then one of them gets a phone call. And she turns into this nasty bitch on the phone. It's like, oh, rah, 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 right? And she hangs up the phone, and, and, and who did she just get a phone call from? Maybe her, her ex, or, you know, who knows what. But, we can all believe that situation. We've all done that. We've all changed our personality instantly, okay? Human beings are capable of such a wide range of emotions and reactions, and, and a person who is your enemy over here, if they didn't know you and you came at them um, at a different time um, and just said hi, they'd say hi to you, okay? So we control how other people respond to us. So you wanna change your world, raise your bar, and change your attitude, okay? That's the, the thinking version of the secret. Okay, next, people overconsume free. If you aren't doing free stuff, I mean, look, um, you know, you've all seen my Instant Teleseminar product, right? Where we, you, know, you, you fill in the, the form and then boom, you have a web page for your event and you, um, uh, you can webcast it and record it and replay it and it's all automatic, right? It's not free. So how can I make more money with that product? What if I came out with a free version of the product? You know, limited in some way. Do you think I'd get some customers? You think I'd make like millions of dollars from that? I would. And it wouldn't be because of my marketing, because I, I, I changed the structure of my offer. Now, it's not just free for 21 days. It's free, use it, okay? That's the power of free. 
Would you guys like a free product that you could give away and build your list? Like, like a, a, a real big one, incredible one, under your brand? Maybe that's, re maybe that's related to an offer I'm going to give you. Could be. Okay, um, heartbeat. I love this concept. This comes from um, uh, Vern Harnish, uh, the Rockefeller Habits. Okay? You've got to have a heartbeat in your business. And actually, a heartbeat in almost anything in life. What I mean by a heartbeat is like the weekly meeting is a heartbeat. Okay? Um, the daily phone call is a heartbeat. The monthly phone call is a heartbeat. Uh, the quarterly report is a heartbeat. If you think of your business in terms of the heartbeats that you have, you've just taken a great leap in systemizing. For example, some of you have heard that I'm on this little political campaign kick, change the world with, with, with a new, pol new, new political theory. I don't have the, the time or the, I don't want this to dominate my life. Okay, I'm not gonna run for Congress. So my heartbeat for this is that once a day I'm going to blog about it, and once a week I'm gonna have a teleseminar that's open for people to talk to me about their ideas and volunteer, and we're gonna organize that for one hour a week. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I'm changing the world, I hope, with you know, 10 minutes a day on the, on the blog and an hour a week on the thing. That's my heartbeat. You notice how the heartbeat does a couple things. It contains, it adds constraints. Okay, remember we talked about how important constraints were? The heartbeat adds constraints to what I'm doing. So much time, this, this pattern. The heartbeat also guarantees that I don't forget to keep on doing it, okay? And what the coolest thing is, you can add heartbeats to your business by sending an email to your virtual assistant, or to some employee, or to your spouse even, okay? Um, I have a virtual assistant who is my personal assistant apart from the business, and I kept her separate on purpose. She's my personal assistant. She runs my schedule, and she does whatever I need to do. If I need a plumber, I email her, okay? Um, but I also figured out, duh, my wife keeps having all these honeydews. <laughs> now they're VA dues, right? Okay, so my, my wife had, I, I, I said, look, you know, use her as much as you want to. It's 12 bucks an hour, I don't care, okay? This is gonna blow your minds, some of you. My ex-wife can use her too. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that brilliant? Okay. Changed my life. <laughs> okay, so I hired an assistant for my, my, my ex-wife. So dentist things, or this thing, or the check thing, or whatever, you know, it's taken care of. And does my ex-wife like it? Yeah, do I like it? Yeah. That's the way to do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give you one. <laughs> um, maybe that's part of my offer. I'll let you dream about the offer. Um, I get this one from Dan Kennedy, but I love this one. What are employees? What's the right kind of financial description of an employee? Like, what is an employee for your business? Time and money suckers. Adult daycare. They. <laughs> They are rented assets, according to Dan Kennedy. I love that phrase. Employees are rented assets. What's an asset? An asset is something that exists, virtually or really or whatever. It exists and, and it stays as it is and, adds, and, can, and can be leveraged, okay? It can make you more money. And, and in the case of an employee, for a time, you are renting them. You're renting this person. It's not slavery, they can leave you, <laughs> okay? But you are renting them, it's a free trade. Now, confusion over this relationship is what Karl Marx you know, brought to the world and 170 million murders that went along with it. But employees are rented assets and it's a free trade. They can, we can both make a different decision depending on what state you live in. So that frees you up a little bit to think about how much profit is each employee making for me? And here's one other insight from that book. You have one goal for that person. It might be that your 10th goal on your list, but it's their top goal as far as you're concerned, right? Make money for my company. Help my customers so I make money. Balance the books so I make money. All this kind of stuff, right? Where does make my boss money fit in their priority list? 
it's someplace in there because they want a job, but they're willing to leave the job too. So it's, it's down there someplace. You know, find the right spouse. You know, who knows what, okay? A lot of things have fun on Friday. A lot of things are higher priority than make money for my boss. That necessarily creates conflict. Let's just admit that, okay? And so what this speaks to is um, having this philosophy. You have to read the book, okay? Because you have to learn how to subtly address this, this with your employees. So you create a culture where they understand why they're there and they're okay with it. And people who aren't okay with it leave. And so the book is called The Ruthless Management of People and Profits, something like that. You'll, you'll find it. Dan Kennedy, The Ruthless Management of People and Profits. I love it. Okay, cash cow. I kind of hinted at this with the destroying your business concept. If you have a cash cow, your life gets wonderful. <laughs> okay, passive income. You need to remember to add constraints to it. What I'm doing with my passive income from my previous products is I am putting it right back in the business. I have a nice lifestyle, but everything above that lifestyle goes right back in the business. And I, am, I have three different development teams, three different partnerships, who are each working on three different amazing things, um, and potentially like $100, $100 million businesses, I'm serious. And, um, and so I get to kind of not be too involved because I'm paying them or we have the right partnership set up or whatever. And um, I get to sit back and kind of help these things happen without actually having to do any work. I'm very protective of my time. Very, okay? Um, okay, but the, the cash cow makes that possible. So let's talk about first business versus second business. A lot of people who go for it in business, they have second business business models. A second business business model is high risk, high reward, change the world, big dream. A first business business model is low risk, moderate re reward, high likelihood of success, okay? Your goal isn't to change the world with your first business. Um, your goal is to create a cash cow to let you fund your bigger vision. Make sense? Okay, so reduce the risk, increase the likelihood of success, and go from there. The big win is exponential growth. This ties into the viral idea, but you know, things don't appear to be changing at all, and then as they keep going, as a percentage increase, they get huge, huge results. That means personal development, okay? A, a baby, a one-year-old, is just walking around, okay? And yet they're gonna become a mature human being someday and be able to interact in amazing ways and change the world. But the first 20 years of, the, of their life, they're goofballs, <laughs> okay? Sucking up time, energy, money, and love. Okay, in a good way, but you know, it takes a long time for them to become really productive members of society. Years, tw decades, decades. Why then judge your business so harshly? Your businesses are all babies. Okay, love them, okay? Laugh when they make mistakes. <laughs> okay, Does it, doesn't that change the attitude a little bit maybe? It does for me. It's like, oh, we can relax. Almost everything you guys are stressing about, whatever it is, me too, from a different context, it's funny. Okay, from, from a more mature context, like I've been there, done that, <laughs> I can tell you stories, right? So everything, we, everything we're stressing about, we take a step back a little bit, look at the context, and look at why we're doing what we're doing, and, and things get good. Okay, um, marketing partner concept. My dad was an entrepreneur, and he was always the marketing partner in, he loved keeping track of all the numbers and stuff, but he was always the marketing partner in his partnerships. And time and time again, and he, and he never learned to fix this, he kept partnering with the wrong people. He kept partnering with people that would you know, help create version one of their, of their company. But as soon as their company was successful, they're like, well, why do we need Dick Raddatz anymore? Okay, you know, I mean, what's, what's he really doing? Okay, so, and they did find some way to screw up the partnership and force them out and take, o take over control. And my dad was a handshake kind of a guy, and so he almost always could get screwed that way. Um, and, and so, and actually the mafia took over his pizza business one time. I guess Italians love their pizza. But the, um, uh, but the lesson I learned from that is two things. Number one, partner with A-level people, people that have reputations, people who do business by reputation, okay? because they, if they screw you, they, they hurt themselves more than they hurt you, 
Okay, so that's a, a natural alignment kind of concept. Okay, A-level people who are above the radar, who are known people, partner with them. Now to partner with them, there's, there's no, no partnership is asymmetric. Okay, uh, all partnerships that work are equal. And if one person's way up here and one person's down here in some metric, it's because this person's giving more time or energy or focus or something to make it equal. Okay, I have limited time that I'm willing to give up, so someone wants to do all the work, I'll give some advice and I'll email my list. Okay, why would I say no? I love why would I say no offers. Why would I say no? Maybe that's related to the offer you're gonna get later on. Why would you say no? Everyone fill out the $1 form? It's getting closer. Okay, um, the other thing about marketing partners is if you are on the other side, if you are the development, development partner or the operations partner, and you partner with a marketer, do not forget what they did to get you where you are. They earned their share forever by what they did in the beginning that made it work. So every month I pay Alex and Armin a lot of money, money that would fund most of your businesses fully. Okay, and, and they are, haven't done really a whole lot of work in years, okay? Now they mention it when they have opportunity and, and I thank them for that, but they don't have to do it. They've earned their commission checks for getting me going, right? So that's my attitude I have with them. So I want to encourage you guys to have that attitude when you have a marketing partner. Um, okay, I think that's the end of my random good ideas thing. Let's give you a quick little demo of what's coming next for McRaddis, okay? Let's go to that other um, browser there. And let's go to the next tab, the, uh, um, okay. Now I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna get for your dollar, okay? You guys are all gonna get access to Brevity, okay, as a starter. Access to Brevity. Brevity is a business of mine that um, I read a book a week and I give you my insights from the book. It's not a book summary. I take the top five lessons or insights from that book and I analyze those insights and I draw in my experience and my, my creativity and, and whatever else I can think of um, into my discussion of each of those insights. So this is an analysis of the key insights of each of these books. And let's just go scroll down, scroll up and down a little bit. Um, I, I, I've already done like 50 of these things or 40 of these things. So you're gonna get instant access to all of this stuff in the past and another bonus that's uh, even cooler than this uh, for your dollar uh, in just a little bit. Uh, let's go on to the next tab. Okay. The, um, I wanna tell you a little bit about what's happening with Instantella Seminar because this is related to what my offer is to you. I, I, I'm going to actually give you a chance to own your own private label of Instantella Seminar uh, under very favorable terms um, and guarantees, okay, and um, uh, including a, a free version under your brand that you can give away. It's gonna be a companion to all the free conference call lines out there. So suddenly free conference call lines are not your competitor, they are your friend. The more people in the world who are using free conference call lines, Xylesoft uh, Presenter under your brand name, the Web Presenter product, is gonna be able to do PowerPoint sharing over the web, so you get to offer free PowerPoint sharing to go along with your free conference call line. And who, who owns that lead under a private label, label agreement? I do. You guys do. I don't. I have a nice revenue split with you. But this is going to be a way that you guys are going to be able to grow your businesses, regardless of what market you're in, it doesn't matter. Who is in a market where they can use teleseminars to sell? I have a guy selling coffee via teleseminars. Okay, if you can sell coffee, premium coffee via teleseminars, you can sell anything via teleseminars. So as I go through this, um, I'm gonna show you what's coming next in, in, in the instant teleseminar world. As I go through this, I want you to think, what if I owned this product? Okay, how much would I pay to own this product and own the brand and, uh, and own the, the, the viral spread of this free uh, piece of software? The people are gonna get status for, for sharing. Now, this is Instantel Seminar as it looks right now. Okay, you have a, a bunch of different um, you know, icons down here they can do different things with, and you can have a list of all of your events that you're, that you're doing. And um, the whole idea here is to create a new um, uh, uh, event uh, to promote. So, um, Frank, let's go ahead and click on the Add New Event button. 
Nope. That's the other tab. Yeah, click on the Add New Event button. Add New Event. Oh, wait, we're not on the web. We're not on the web. OK. And then don't do that. Go on to the next tab. OK. OK, that was the old kind of style. This is the new style. Now, as part of this deal, I'm going to give you access to my web developers and artists. OK? So, I mean, this is just one, one look, but you, you can have it look any way you want to. OK, You're nice and professional. OK? And, 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 and I'll give you access to their basically at, at near my cost, um, certainly my, my burden cost, um, which I, I think is $15 or $20 an hour. So well, I'll figure out what that is. Uh, no, heck, I'll, I'll just say it right now. It's $15 an hour um, is, is your cost to use my web developers um, who are overseas. Uh, artists is in U the Ukraine. Uh, the, the developers are in Argentina. And so you get to use them to help you customize your sales flow and your web page, all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next tab. Um, okay, this is NConnex. Okay, now, um, I want to take a, take a little break here and, and properly explain the different products that are part of this bundle, okay? Because Instantella Seminar is really the web presence, okay? There's also a phone bridge, right? You guys know how, how the phone bridge thing works? Everyone, everyone dials in. You know, you, you, you dial in, your co-host dials in, all of your guests dial in, your attendees dial in. Everyone dials into the same phone conference. And then some people can talk and some people can listen, okay? So that's how a phone bridge works. It's a conference call, okay? So my team actually built our own conference call system. This is not something I licensed from some other company. This is something our team built. We did that because the number one provider in the industry, which was VAPS, V-A-P-P-S, sucked. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, my, it's my evaluation. Um, they kept going down, um, and, and like, people associated that with my product. I don't like that, okay? So I partnered with the right people, somebody who wrote his own operating system, FreeBSD, if you're familiar with that. It runs almost all of Yahoo, okay? So the guy who designed the operating system that runs Yahoo um, is my partner on the NConnex phone bridge, okay? That should be impressive. Okay, this is, this is the man <laughs> when it comes to development. He's, one, he's credibly one of the top programmers in the world. So, so he's built this scalable, stable phone bridge that has better voice quality than anything else. The technical way of describing that is full 32-bit uncompressed audio mixing, okay, including automatic voice volume leveling of all speakers, automatic, okay? No one else has this that I am aware of, nobody, nobody. This conference system is as crystal clear as you can get on phone lines. And actually, the prominence of cell phones dramatically lowers the quality of conference call lines, which is why this is more and more important to have, the, the quality. So what you're gonna get, if you, if you take me up on my offer, is you're gonna get um, the best platform for conference calls in the world. I'm not saying it has the most features. I'm saying it's the best platform for growth. What's harder, making this thing at all or adding a few new features every, every month or two, okay? Building this thing at all is incredibly complex. Now that we've done the hard part, the, the team is just going there adding new features. Uh, last week, um, I, I, I'm sorry we're not online. Um, I miscommunicated with, with Ken. I, I thought we had online access. Um, not, it's not Ken's fault. but. Um, uh, so you can click on the, each of these tabs, you can see who's on your phone line. You can see if they're, um, what their phone number is, what they called in as. You can see their name, caller ID name, not everybody does that. You can type in a new name if you want to and have that be stored in memory. Um, you can put them on hold and they can hear hold music. You can put the whole conference on hold, that's a new feature last week, so that you and your host can be talking while everyone else is on, on, in the hold room, okay? Um, uh, you've heard of other conferences maybe that have breakout sessions and that kind of stuff. Someday we'll add that, but I'm not guaranteeing when. Okay, but we're, we're, we hear a feature, we're gonna prioritize it, we're gonna add it. Um, okay, so this is the phone bridge. So item number one in your private label, label package that I'm gonna be offering you today is you get the phone bridge under your brand name, okay? And you can sell it um, currently in a 100 line package or a 250 line package. Those are the two packages. And we're thinking of adding a 10-person line for like little corporate meetings okay, at a lower price. Okay, um, let's go on the next tab. Okay, this is a zebra butt. That's the picture I, I guess I stopped on. Um, 
Uh, this is the, um, <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about the power, yeah, you get a free zebra butt, how cool is that? You always, a gift you never dreamed you'd have. The, um, anyway, okay, so we have the phone bridge, right? I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't want clarity to be a problem here with your decision. Okay, so over here we have the phone bridge. Okay, that's just the phone call. There's no web interface except for your control panel. Okay, everyone's calling it over the phone, okay? That's cool, okay, that's, that's, that's 30 years old, but we have the coolest one ever, okay. Over here, we have web presence. What does web presence mean? It, it means that you have a pre-event page that tells people about the event that you can customize. It means that you have webcasting. It means that there's a chat room. It means that you can share PowerPoint slides. It means that people can type in questions, okay? So you have all of these things. It means you have webcasting, a simulcast. You can listen on the phone or the web, your choice. You guys have experienced that. Um, it also means that you have a recording built in that automatically publishes your replay. So that's part of web presence, okay? All of that is part of web presence. So we have two products so far in your private label package. You have phone bridge. You have web presence, okay. Um, and then you have a bundle, okay? You, you can sell both, right? Phone bridge, web presence, bundle. Okay, and then the, the last product is the free version. Okay, so there's four things you get here. The free version is the key. This is why you wanna do this deal. Okay, this is why it's a no-brainer. Because the free version is the thing that you give away for free. Everybody who, um, uh, everybody who is using a free conference call line because they're cheap sons of bitches, as I, as I see them, not, I'm not just kidding. Everybody who has a free conference call line they're gonna be very likely, and there's a lot of them out there, to say, hey, I wanna do PowerPoint sharing, okay? So you give away the web presence for free. Now they can't webcast and they can't record and they can't replay. That's all that they can't do. They can do everything else. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna upgrade and give you money and me money, okay? And um, uh, they're gonna to upgrade to the webcast re recording and replay. And then what are they gonna do? They're gonna upgrade again because they're gonna like the built-in integrated um, phone bridge. And, and for those of you who are using this Intel Seminar right now, we've just completed the integration, the full integration, of the phone bridge and the Intel Seminar moderator tools, so you can see who's on and all that kind of stuff all on the same page. Okay, I got a woo. Okay, uh, next uh, tab. Okay, this is what the user sees as an example. Now this is only a, a 1024 by 768 screen, so this would be the minimum that they'd see. Normally they'd see a little bit extra width here. But um, you can pick your background, you can see the PowerPoint slides presented nice, nice and cleanly. You have a little menu there for your attendees to interact with, and you can add links. I didn't show this, I should have, but you can add links below that here and a call to action button. The whole idea is this, a lot of people are using webinars, okay, but they're complicated, there's a download, um, uh, the interface is very techy, it's not a very, very warm and friendly kind of sales environment. The idea for this is to look professional. You can upload your own background and, and, and so on, uh, but you can also have the focus be this call to action button. So whether they're listening on the phone or listening via the web, they still got the phone number or whatever from this page, so they, um, they're here at the call to action button. And if you make it easy for someone to buy, they're gonna be more likely to buy, okay? So the fact that there's a call to action button here means that now you can do your PowerPoint presentations and have a higher conversion rate than a webinar because you are focusing people on the call to action, which is buy, right here, and just link right to your order page. In fact, the best practice, on your teleseminar, have a contest, okay? Um, you know, click on the order button and what is word number 35 on the order page? Email it in to me, okay? You know, the, the first, the, thank you. Um, I, 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 a lot of people are doing that now, so it's, I, I don't know whose idea it was first. <laughs> Is that yours? I, I think I came up with it independently at the same time, like Edison and the other guy, I, I think, I don't. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna give it to Harris. But anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a best practice, okay? So, so do a contest, have them experience the order page so that they're, they're familiar with it and have fun with it. Um, okay, let's, is, there, is there another tab? Okay, okay, this is the private label area, okay? Meaning, 
if you take me up on this offer, you're going to get access to this so that you can um, you modify your website and all the messages, you know, the autoresponder, uh, all that kind of stuff, the welcome message. Um, uh, you get to you know, recruit your own affiliates here. Uh, now, just to be clear, the affiliates don't help you make any more money until you get to a 500 member level. Okay? Conference calls are really, really expensive to run. Most conference call companies only give you a 5 or 10% affiliate commission. Some give you a little bit more. Okay? We're giving 25% commissions here. Okay? That blows the competition out of the water. So to, to encourage your affiliates to do good too, we give them the same 25%. And the reason why you want to recruit affiliates though is so that you can get to that 500 active member level and then we give you a bonus, like 8% bonus on top of everybody, including people that your affiliates recruited, including your own people, you get a bonus. And if you get up to like 1,000 people, I think it is, you get a 15% bonus, okay, across to everybody. So that gives you some, some power for the future. Um, and then you can look at all your customers and um, you don't have to actually do support, that's support for you. We do all the customer service for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, why would you want to be in that business, right? Okay. So, but, but, but this is your way to get support. If you have a question, you can ask us, and then that's on the support tab, and then you can log out. So this is the private label area. The reason I'm showing you this is because I was inspired by, um, is it Jason's um, uh, demo this morning with the cPanel stuff? That made WordPress so darn easy, didn't it? It's like, I didn't know that, <laughs> okay? So um, I loved how easy that was, even though it's a little bit technical. This is something there, sometimes you'll do it because of the customer, access here, sometimes your webmaster will do this, it, it doesn't matter. The point is that you log in, you control your private label, and it's easy, okay? So um, the price for the private label is going to be a steep discount for you for one reason. I haven't yet launched the free product yet, okay? Then I'll, I'll tell you where I am in the development cycle. We just finished the integration of all this. We're working on the private label integration of the web presence. We're going to launch that, I think, in about a month. Okay? So the phone bridge is ready right now. The web presence in about a month. The free version of the web presence, I'm going to guess two months. Okay? That's my guess. No guarantees. Okay? So how much money do you think I can sell the private label rights for all four of these products, including the lead generating free version that you get to spread around the world. You own the relationship with the leads. They're your leads, not mine. I can't follow up with them. You can. You can upsell them um, into these products or into your own products. How, what's that? Easy. Easy. Okay, probably an upfront fee of five to $10,000 and then $1,000 a month. Okay, because we're giving them a whole business. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to build this. I mean, we built a conference call system, people, okay? This is expensive stuff. Okay, so, but we believe in, in this viral social media, like let, let everyone, especially small business people, I love small business people, let's let all the small business people participate in this and each reach their own niche and then help them with the free version to expand beyond their current influence in the market and, and dominate their niche, right? So um, the, the answer is, right now, today, for you guys, it's $3,000, okay? $3,000, so on the bottom of your $1 order form, uh, this doesn't commit you, you can note in $3,000 as the price, okay? But um, uh, right now, no one else can get this, and there's a reason why no one else can get this right now, because I'm, I'm, I, I want money. I want to wait until I have the free version out in two months or so and then sell it for three times the price I'm offering to you without sharing any with Ken. Sorry, Ken, okay? <laughs> so in two, in two months, I can make a whole lot more money with this, but I won't necessarily know you in two months if I don't do a deal with you today. So for that reason, you guys get a steep discount. It's called um, um, a discounted cash value or something like that, future value. There's some kind of formula for this. Um, but the, the point is, $3,000, you get all of this. Now, Let's think about this for a second. You're putting this where? On your credit card. Times are tough. We're putting it on your credit card. What's the minimum payment for about $3,000? It's around $60 a month. Okay, so 60 bucks a month, about, about 2%. 60 bucks a month is your payment on this. 
How many customers do you need at 25% of $97? How many customers do you need to pay for this and have this be free, honestly free? Anybody? But two or three, three people, okay? You get three people on this platform on the, on the bundle version or four or five on the, on the smaller versions, whatever. You get three, four, or five people to become customers of yours. It is free. And this is the kind of math you guys better trust because this is business math, okay? Is there any risk? Of course not. I'm selling from the stage. I have to offer a guarantee. And so I offer a guarantee. You can ask for your $3,000 back whenever you want. No limit. Ten years from now, you want it back, no problem. Next month, uh, tomorrow, okay, I'll lose money because I'm sharing with Ken, but I will give you your money back, okay, in full. Okay? I'm not going to do a double your money back guarantee. I've done a four times money back guarantee when I got sick and I left it on a voicemail. Uh, I, I was trying to be number one affiliate for Alex's Teleseminar Secrets, and I was closing people by the phone. I said, call me up and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you if it's for you or not, and I told some people yes, some people no. And then I got this like 104 degree fever, I could not continue. And so I offered on my voicemail, another little marketing tip for you. I said, this is Rick Raditz, I, this is not a joke, I'm not, it's not a ploy, I am sick. I cannot take any more calls. So since you're hearing this, I need to make you a great offer. And I need to tell you my formula for whether or not it's right for you or not. And the formula is, if you think teleseminar or whatever, you know, I, I gave him my, my formula, okay? And, um, and I said, since you listen to this message, you're highly qualified. If you do this today, because it's the deadline, if you do this today, I will offer you a four times your money back guarantee, and the password is whatever, um, so that I know that you heard this message. Okay, make the best decision for you, and, and there weren't any, it wasn't any constraints. I sold 30 of those with that voice message, $1,000 commission each, the $30,000 voicemail message, okay? Um, so I, I'm willing to do that, but not, I, I, not, not today, okay? So, but, but I will give you your money back, okay? You guys decide, in part because I want you guys to do this because you want to do this, okay? Now I believe that all of you should be using teleseminars in your business. I believe, therefore, the actual use of this service will sell the service under your brand name. Okay, we discussed this already, right? So for free, if you get a few customers, you also get the cool thing in two months or so, the free version of the PowerPoint web presence product that you can launch to your list whatever, even if you're selling coffee, I don't care, someone needs teleseminars, okay, and then it'll spread from there. You can post it on blogs that you don't even visit normally, but sell your, 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 your brand. You can do whatever you want with it, it's your brand. So my goal here was to, and you guys tell me if I succeeded or not, my goal was to create a $3,000 offer that was actually an honest no-brainer. Okay, because I got the guarantee, you, you're gonna finance it 60 bucks a month on your credit card, you know what your goal is to achieve that, that, that cash flow neutrality on your investment. And, and I will say this, one of the points I forgot to mention, I don't know if I did write it down or if I didn't see it, was leverage. There's good leverage and bad leverage. Okay, bad leverage is borrowing to pay for payroll. Really bad idea, okay? Good leverage is borrowing to invest in something that pays for its monthly payment and has potential for much more, especially when there's a credible risk management strategy, which is me giving you money back. Fair enough? Okay. So that's the offer. And um, I'm going to throw in some more bonuses. I'm going to say that you could get an hour with me to brainstorm the integration of this with your business. It's an hour with me. Now, you know me, Mr. Brainiac Guy. Do you think I might offer you some extra value and insight and, and thoughts while we, while we spend an hour? Yeah, I, that, absolutely. And do you think I might go over an hour if we need to? Yes. In fact, you can call me anytime you want. If you do this. You're my partner now. I want to support you. I have the time. 
Okay, this is one of my, I'm, I have three big, big, big missions business-wise, and this is one of them. So I want to support you with this. Call me, call me whenever you want. And then you got the guarantee. And I'm going to throw in some more bonuses, just because I'm nuts. Or I'm pretending to be nuts. Um, five years free of all my other services and any services I create in the future. Five years, no, uh, that's my goal. It's, self, it's a self-funding, business acceleration, fun thing. That's the goal, okay? And if it doesn't work out, I'll give you your money back. So I want you not just to buy this, but I want you to learn from this experience that you can be yourself, you can have fun, you can think through the problem, and then you can do way more than you think is possible with your business and actually do it with a whole lot less work uh, and, and, and also add in purpose and fun into the mix. Okay, so all this is possible. I'm Rick Raditz, and I'll see you around tomorrow. All right, thank you.